Hi everyone. Now we will start analyzing uh, the capacitive charge shedding circuits. I'll start with a simple circuit and we'll slowly add more and more complexity to those circuits. So shown here is a very simple circuit. You have two capacitors of value C and a MOSFET sandwiched in between them. The gate voltage of the MOSFET is at two volts and the drain is at two. I'm calling this terminal as drain because it's at a higher voltage. Initially, the other capacitor is charged to zero volts. We are supposed to find out what is the steady state voltage across both these capacitors. The threshold voltage is given to be 0.5 volts. Now, when you try to analyze circuits like this, first, I mean, I'll, I'll just give a gentle way of looking at them. But intuitively, what you what happens in the circuit is that immediately we can first analyze it in a brute force way and see what happens to the circuit. Then we will try to apply some quick uh, shortcuts to get the answers. Okay, so before while analyzing these circuits, you just have to apply the conditions under which the current can go to zero. That is the first condition you have to apply, and the second condition is charge conservation, because if the circuit just consists of capacitors, charge is conserved. So you have to use these two conditions to derive the final state, final steady state voltages across these capacitors. First, you can see that. VGS is 2 volts because the source the source voltage is initially at 0 volts. VGS is 2, VDS is 2, so and VT is just 0.5. So immediately there will be a current flowing in this device. Now mind you, in the previous lecture, this capacitor was an ideal voltage source. So that had infinite ideal voltage source. I said one of the lectures can be seen as a capacitor in terms of value infinity. It has an infinite capacitor bank. So it has infinite charge. Okay, it will maintain its voltage. Even, it, even if it keeps providing a huge amount of charge to the other capacitor. But in this case, it's a finite capacitor with a finite charge. 2C is the finite charge. So as current flows here, which means charge is getting transferred from this cap to this cap, the other cap, the voltage across this cap will decrease because charge it's losing some charge. So this voltage will decrease and the voltage across this capacitor will increase and eventually they will reach a steady state. Now before we solve that, I'll quickly refresh your memory with a resistive, if I had a resistor in between, we know easily how to, in fact, we can derive a complete close, close form expression for all time. So the initial voltage, the, this capacitor here, it will start from an initial voltage and reach a steady state. And the other capacitor will gain the initial voltage, gain voltage, gain charge, and it will again reach a steady state voltage, where both the voltages across these capacitors will be the same. Okay, so to find the steady state voltages, we just use charge conservation. Initial charge should be equal to the final charge. V naught of infinity is the final voltage across both the capacitors. So the total charge will be 2C into V naught of infinity. That should be equal to 2C. So that will give us the steady state voltage as 1 volt. So it's very easy to solve and we get that. The moment you introduce a MOSFET, it's a nonlinear device. So Initially, I mean, if you want to solve an exact closed form expression, you will end up getting nonlinear differential equations. And, that, and those can only be solved numerically. You cannot write closed form expressions. But we can find the steady state voltages using these conditions for the drain current going to zero or uh, and charge conservation. Now, we said that the, dr the drain voltage is decreasing and source voltage is inc increasing. In a similar way that we saw for a resistive circuit, we can also end up in a condition where VDS becomes zero because we saw that that is the condition when current becomes zero, right? When both these capacitor voltages become equal, that is the point when the drain current becomes zero. But you have to ensure that your VGS should be greater than VT, right? Otherwise, if let's say you already crossed that condition of VGS less than or equal to VT, then this may not be an accurate answer. So that's what we need to do. First, apply charge sharing. Assume that both the capacitors can come to same voltage and figure out the voltage and see if you are satisfying this condition. So now if this is node voltage is at 2 volts, the maximum the source can go to is 1.5 volts. So using charge conservation, if you get an answer greater than 1.5, then you know the answer is wrong. Okay, so that's not possible. So it's not possible because you've already reached one of the cutoff current uh, cutoff conditions. So you cannot get a voltage greater than 
so using that i can say that i, I mean i'll uh, use chart sharing first so assuming that this capacitor voltage is decreasing the other capacitor voltage is increasing eventually both become the same that is the point when vds becomes zero that also the point when the charge transfer becomes zero which means drain current is zero so using that it's very similar to what we did for a resistor we will get a steady state voltage of 1 volt across both the capacitors. Now when this is 1 volt, we can readily see your VGS is still 1 volt. I mean it is not VTM. Okay. So which means this is a permissible solution. So this will be our final steady state voltage. The steady state is occurring because your VDS has gone to 0 even though VDS is, VGS is still finite. So this will be whichever condition occurs first that will dictate the steady state so vds is zero is the condition which is satisfied first that will dictate the steady state so therefore the voltage across both the capacitors will just be one volt so which is what i've shown in fact we can look at the id versus vds graphs and all that but we won't go there well now the second circuit what i'm going to do is i'm going to or rather i'll just probably slightly tweak this circuit itself i told you the beginning uh, when analyze, analyzing the circuit i said the maximum this capacitor voltage can go to is 1.5 you cannot exceed 1.5 volts okay if by using charge sharing condition or charge conservation you end up getting a voltage greater than 1.5 then you know it's it's the answer is not right so to do that let's assume initial instead of charging the capacitance to 2 volts i charge it to 4 volts if I charge this capacitor to 4 volts, then using charge sharing, con charge conservation principle, and you know, assuming VDS equal to 0 is the condition which leads to, you know, the drain current going to 0, then I will end up getting V0 of infinity as 2 volts. But this tells me, this VGS less than or equal to VT condition tells me source voltage cannot go greater than 1.5. So which means this, this is not correct. So I, I discard this. So we, what, what all it's telling me is that the drain voltage is decreasing from 4 volts, source voltage is increasing and when it reaches 1.5, it stops, it stays at 1.5 and this capacitor voltage, it starts decreasing from 4, whatever steady state value it has reached, it will stay at that value itself. So VGS less than VT is satisfied first, even though VDS is finite. So that's what is happening in the circuit. So then how do you find steady state? So we know that this capacitor steady state final voltage is 1.5. It cannot exceed 1.5. So the charge across this capacitor is 1.5C. The initial charge is 4C. The charge that you have lost, this capacitor has lost is uh, 1.5C. It has lost 1.5C which is delivered to this. So the remaining charge is 2.5C. So once you know the charge, you know the voltage across it which will be 2.5 volts. So that's the steady state voltage across this capacitor. So that's the difference between a MOS circuit and a resistor. A resistor, the only condition is both the capacitor voltage is becoming equal. But in case of a MOSFET, when you have MOSFETs, you can have conditions where the voltage across both the capacitors will not or need not be same. And we have shown one example here because a MOSFET current can go to zero in more than one conditions. One is VDS equal to zero, that's like a resistor. The other condition is like a diode, which is VGS, VGS less than VT. It stops conducting at that point. So we can get two different operating points, uh, two different solutions, depending on which condition is satisfied first. The same way, uh, what I've done in the circuit is that I've reduced the gate voltage to one volt. Okay, and drain voltage is at two. And we know immediately the source voltage cannot exceed 0.5 volts. So your drain voltage starts from 2 volts initially. It's decreasing. Source voltage is increasing. If, let's say, this MOSFET was always conducting, okay, it, it was conducting till steady state, then we know that from charge conservation principle, both these nodes will be equal in potential. The steady state will be at 1 volt. But we know it cannot go more than 0.5 because the MOSFET restricts it from going above 0.5 because after that MOSFET stops transferring charge. So this capacitor voltage starts raising. Ideally, it would it would have gone till 1 
but it stops at 0.5 and it remains constant. And to find the steady state voltage across this capacitor, you just use charge conservation. So the charge lost is C by 2. Initial charge is 2C. So the charge remaining in this capacitance is 3 by 2C. So the voltage across it will simply be, so 2C minus C by 2 is 3, 3 by 2C. So the remaining charge, uh, remaining voltage across it is 3 by 2 or 1.5 volts. Okay. Now we'll analyze another simple circuit, which is now I'm going to sandwich a diode connected MOSFET between the two capacitors. The moment you add a diode connected MOSFET between the two capacitors, uh, I've already said you can simply replace it like a diode and analyze it. So if this node voltage is Vx, the final voltage across the capacitor, so we know that the drain voltage will decrease, the source voltage will increase, but the condition that you will always satisfy is that the source voltage can never reach, I mean, can never reach a voltage greater than the drain minus Vt or gate minus Vt. So this node voltage, if let Vx be the steady state voltage across this capacitor, the voltage across the other capacitor will just be Vx minus Vt. It cannot go greater than that. So that's the point where conduction will stop and that will be the steady state voltages across the capacitors. So how do you find what Vx is? We just apply charge conservation. So if this is Vx, the steady st final voltage across the other capacitor is Vx minus Vtn. So the total charge in this cap, it's going to be Cvx. In this, it's going to be C into Vx minus Vtn. That should be equal to the initial charge, which is 2C. So equate that and solve this equation. You will directly get Vx as 1.25 volts. So which means if this node voltage is 1.25 volts, the other node will be 0.5 volts lower than that. So it will come to 0.75 volts. So this node will come to 0.75 volts. Okay, so that's it. And as I said, I'll slowly add more and more complexity and we'll analyze uh, these circuits. In this circuit, all I have, I have four capacitors and three MOSFETs sandwiched in between them. So the first capacitor is connected to two volts, gate is connected to two volts. So immediately we can see all the source terminals because gates, all the gates are at two volts. The maximum the source terminals can go to is 1.5 volts. So all the sources can go to a maximum of 1.5 volts. Okay. That is the, that's, that's when the device will start going into cutoff region, meaning VGS will become less than VT. So first I'll solve it using charge sharing and see if I'm violating this condition. If my voltage is less than 1.5, then that's the steady state voltage. If it is greater, then we'll have to find out the voltage using a different approach. So you have the initial charge across the capacitors 2C. Uh, that's the initial charge. The final, let's assume all the four voltages are same in the steady state. Vds equal to zero is the condition which is making the drain currents go to zero. So let V naught of infinity be the voltage across all the four caps into 4C will be the total final charge. So from this, we get the steady state voltage across all the caps as half a volt or 0.5 volts. So all of them will gain 0.5 volts. And that does not violate because this voltage is still less than 1.5. So which means we haven't reached the other condition for cutoff yet. So by this time itself, we have already reached the first condition, which is VDS becomes equal to zero. So charge goes from two volts to this capacitor. Then it will go from here to this, here to this. Charge transfer will keep happening. So remember this capacitor voltage will decrease. All these capacitor voltages will increase. Okay. Eventually they'll settle down when all the four voltages become 0.4 volts. Now I'm reducing the gate voltage to one volt. Okay, in the same way, I've just added more transistors now. What happens when the gate voltage becomes one? Remember, when the gate voltage becomes one, 
all the three, V1, V2, V3, cannot exceed 0.5 volts. The maximum they can reach is 0.5. It cannot exceed 0.5. So, we have just solved in the previous case. If I use just charge sharing, the condition when VDS equals 0, I end up getting all the four voltages, V1, V2, V3, the steady state voltages. Uh, let me call this initial voltage as V0 of infinity the voltage across this sorry the voltage across this cap as v naught as infinity or let's call it v0 so this is v0 all the steady state voltages will simply be equal to 0.5 okay and at that point if you see i am satisfying both vds is zero but vgs is also just equal to less than or equal to vth a combination of both conditions but we are just at this point so this will be a steady state operating point Okay, this still this condition has not been reached. Uh, in fact, we can say both conditions have simultaneously reached. Instead of saying one of them have reached before the other, both conditions have simultaneously reached. And it will reach, the steady state voltage will be just 0.5 volts across all the four capacitors in this case. Now, the interesting part will be if I assume the initial voltage to be 4 volts, then we'll see what will be the steady state voltages. Now we said V1, V2, V3 cannot exceed 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts because the gate is at 1, they cannot go more than 0.5 volts. So we know the first, let's call this V0, that voltage is going to decrease and V1, V2, V3 are all going to increase. And even before solving the circuit, we know that the maximum they can go to is 0.5 volts. They cannot go anything greater than 0.5. Okay. If I use charge sharing directly, assuming that you know all the MOSFETs were conducting throughout, if I directly use charge sharing, I would have guessed it should have reached 4C is the initial charge. Let the final charge be where all the voltages become equal. Let's call that as Vx into 4C. From that, I'll end up getting Vx as 1 volt. And I'll end up violating this condition because you cannot have any of these voltages exceeding 0.5. So I cannot get this answer. So this is not right. So the condition which turns off the devices is Vgs less than Vt. So therefore, we can directly write these final voltages as 0.5 because these capacitors' voltages are increasing. When they reach 0.5, they will all stop conducting. They will all stay at 0.5 itself. So until, until they reach 0.5, this capacitor is transferring the charge to all these capacitors. So the total charge that is stored in all the three capacitors is 0.5C plus 0.5C. So you will get 3 by 2C. That's the total charge or 1.5C. And the charge lost by the first capacitor is 4 minus 1.5, which is 2.5C. So from that, I can estimate the final voltage, so which I'm calling it V0 as 2.5 volts. Initially it was 4, it will in the steady state it will come to 2.5 volts. And the other capacitors will all be at V1, V2, V3 will all be at 0.5 volts. Okay, so that's the way you find it out. You apply the conditions and see that you can apply charge sharing condition, I mean charge conservation principle, assuming VDS becomes zero for all the devices and derive, an, derive the final voltage. And if that violates this condition, which is VGS less than or equal to VT condition, then you know that's not the right way. And then you'll have to use this other condition, VGS less than VT, to solve the circuits. So again, as I said, I'll add more and more complexity. So we'll now apply different gate voltages for different MOSFETs. For the last two MOSFETs, I'm going to apply 1 volt. For the first MOSFET, I'm going to apply 2 volts, which means the last two, V2 and V3, cannot exceed 0.5 volts. They cannot exceed 0.5. V1, the maximum it can go to is 1.5 volts. So immediately, based on the knowledge that we have so far, if directly, if all the capacitors were sharing, they would all be reaching 1 volt. Again, that is violating this condition. So that's not right. So first, we have to solve, assume these two capacitors have reached 0.5. Remember, the first capacitor is losing charge, so its voltage is decreasing. All the three capacitors are gaining the voltages. 
So all the three capacitors, I'm just showing the voltage across the three capacitors. The last two capacitors, when they reach 0.5, they will start saturating. They will not, the voltage will not increase anymore. So this will be at 0.5 volts and this will be at 0.5 volts. But this guy, so how is charge transfer taking place? Charge is initially going from this transistor, this capacitor to this capacitor. And again, this capacitor will keep providing the charges to these two. So now I can treat, I can treat these two devices as one system after they lost, after these two devices, I mean, after these two capacitors charge to 0.5, no current flows anymore. So then I can treat these two capacitors as a different system. Okay, what do I mean by that? Is that I have already transferred 0.5 C, 0.5 C, which is total C amount of charge to these two capacitors. After that, I'm left with just these two capacitors undergoing charge sharing with this MOSFET in place. So the charge lost is C. The initial charge is 4 C. So the charge remaining, which can be shared between these two capacitors is 3 C. So keep this in mind. This capacitor is still charging. C is still charging. These two, all the three capacitors were charging initially. But the moment these two reached 0.5, they stopped charging. But this capacitor is still charging. Now what will be the steady state voltage this guy will reach? That we can find out by excluding the charge that is taken up by these two capacitors. So that, that gives me 3C. That's the total charge that's available to be shared between these two devices. Okay, that's the charge available now. And with 3C, you should apply charge sharing, charge conservation for these two capacitors. And remember, the maximum voltage that V1 can go to is 1.5 volts. So again, you'll have to apply charge sharing and figure out what is the voltage V1 comes to. And it should not violate this condition. It should not be greater than 1.5. Then that's the steady state voltage. So you have the total charge available for these two capacitors is 3C. That gets equally distributed between the two capacitors. So you will get Vx into 2C equals 3C. So you get Vx is 3 by 2 or 1.5 volts. So if you see, interestingly, this device reaches a condition where both Vds is 0 and Vgs is also 0. So I've shown the steady state voltage here. I think, yeah. So the steady state voltage is here. These two will reach 0.5 volts. These two capacitors will reach 1.5 volts. So that's how you should analyze them. So the gate voltage will dictate what is the maximum source voltage that these two nodes can go to. Okay. So if you see in real time, if you simulate the circuit, V2 and V3 will stop once they reach 0.5. But V1, it will reach 0.5 and it will keep increasing till it reaches 1.5. And the first guy, V0, will start decreasing. Okay. From 4, it will come down to 1.5. Okay. The slopes will change, you know, depending on different regions. But eventually, it will come to 1.5. So that's how the circuit operates. You have to apply both the conditions. Conditions for VGS is less than or equal to VT or VDS equal to zero and see which condition is, which, I mean, which condition does the circuit hit first. Okay, that will dictate the operating point. In this case, we saw that we, we applied conservation and then saw that the V1 did not exceed 1.5, so we are fine. Okay, so for example, just to, just to make things clearer, let's assume that instead of four volts, I had five volts then how will you solve it? Same way, these two capacitors get a charge of 0.5 C, 0.5 C. So the total charge lost is C. Initial charge is 5 C. Minus C will be 4 C. Now 4 C is the charge that's available that can be shared between these two capacitors. Okay. But remember, this node voltage V1 cannot exceed 1.5 volts. When it reaches 1.5, then this MOSFET will stop conducting. Okay. The total charge that you have available with you for conduction, so instead of 4 volts, it is 5 volts now. 
that you have for conduction, the total charge available is 4C. And if I directly apply charge sharing between these two capacitors, I'll get 2 volts, but that is greater than 1.5, so I can't use 2 volts is not the right answer. So this capacitor will charge to 1.5 and stop after that. And this capacitor from 4C, you'll have to subtract 1.5C because this capacitor will gain 1.5 volts and the charge that it will gain is 1.5C. The remaining charge, which is 2.5C, 4C minus 1.5 will be 2.5C. That will be stored in this capacitor. So the steady state voltage will be 2.5 in that case across this capacitor. Okay, so in case if you feel it's a bit fast, just pause the video and think for yourself for a moment. It will all make sense. Okay, I've given the answers so you can think for yourself. Okay, now in this circuit, we have three capacitors, four capacitors and three MOSFETs sandwiched in between them, but I'm charging both these capacitors to four volts initially. Now you can see this will behave as drain, this will be drain, this will be source, and this will be source. And one interesting thing that you can see here is that this circuit is purely symmetric around, I, I can draw an axis of symmetry around which the circuit is purely symmetric. So which means B1 and B2 will be exactly the same. The circuit is purely symmetric. So V1 and V2 will be same, which means VDS is always zero for this MOSFET. So this MOSFET, there is no current flowing between these two. So I can simply ignore this MOSFET in the center. I can simply open circuit it. I can simply open circuit it and analyze them as two different circuits. So I have, I have four volts. I can simply open circuit this and analyze these two circuits. So I have four volts and another, I have four volts, gate is connected at two. The maximum these two nodes can go to is 1.5 and 1.5. It cannot exceed that, okay? So if I, first I'll apply charge sharing, assuming VDS equal to zero is the condition that leads to zero current, okay? So if I apply a charge sharing directly, I will end up getting two volts across both the caps. But that violates this condition because this gate voltage 2 volts tells me that the source cannot go greater than 1.5. So which means that is the condition, the cutoff condition arrives first. So this capacitor voltage increases and it stops when it reaches 1.5 volts. At 1.5, when the capacitor voltage reaches exactly equal to 1.5 volts, the conduction stops. This small, both the MOSFETs will stop conducting when both reach 1.5. Okay, so this, the charge across, charge in this cap is 1.5C. This is 1.5C. All the charge is coming from this, this cap. And similarly, all the charge for this cap, C, is coming from the 4 volt cap. Okay, so the remaining charge is 2C, 4C minus 1.5, which is 2.5C. So that's the charge present in these two caps, the, you know, capacitors at the both at the extremes. So the voltage will be 2.5 volts. So that's what I've shown here. Okay. And one final circuit using diodes. We'll uh, solve this circuit using diodes. I thought this is, uh, our lecture might be a bit long, but I thought I'll finish off the discussion on uh, charge sharing in one lecture. So the final circuit is capacitors with diode connected MOSFETs sandwiched in between. You have four capacitors and three diodes sandwiched in between. So as I said, you can easily analyze them assuming them like treating them like diodes. The circuit becomes much simpler to analyze if I treat them as diodes. Now, how do you analyze the circuit? When you have four capacitors, how do you go about it? If you recall, I said, if I take a diode, there is always a fixed relationship between these two node voltages. Remember, current can flow in only one direction. This is the highest potential. It can only flow in one direction. So which means capacitors can only gain voltage. They can only, voltage across the capacitors can only be positive. Okay. So let's first assume this voltage is Vx, final voltage. Then this node voltage, so let's call this as V4 or V4, V3, V2, V1. 
v4 I'm assuming to be vx so v3 will be vx plus vtn v2 will be vx plus 2 vtn 1 vt extra and v1 will be vx plus 3 vtn now you add all the four voltages and apply charge conservation okay the initial charge is 2c the final charge is going to be 4 vx plus 6 vtn and from this you will get a value of vx vtn is 0.5 so you will get uh, into c there is uh, 4 vx in the, there is always a capacitance value c so you will get vx as 2 minus 3 by 4 so you will end up getting minus 0.25 volts now remember i just said that current can flow charge can flow from this capacitor to this capacitor that's the only path for the charge to flow for this capacitor to be negative you need to have charge flowing in opposite direction and that's not possible so what it tells me is that the last capacitor's voltage will be zero which means the volt the diodes the last diode does not turn on at all so this capacitor is losing voltage this capacitors are gaining voltage it turns out the last diode gate never exceeds vtn that's what it means I've, i'm getting a negative answer it simply means that the large diode does not turn on at all okay so there is no conduction so i can easily assume the large capacitor voltage is zero v4 is zero so i can remove this from the system altogether and analyze the rest of that so that's what i've shown here so i can remove the lost capacitor okay altogether completely and analyze the circuit now this circuit becomes easier we'll apply the same principle i'll start i'll assume this node voltage is vx so this has to be vx plus 0.5 so this node x will be vx plus 0.5 plus 0.5 which is one volt so you add all the three voltages uh, three charges final charges so that will be 3 vx plus 1.5 volts into c should be equal to 2c so that will be equal to 2 using this you will get vx as one sixth of a volt so that's the maximum voltage this capacitor can go to which is why if you saw i mean if you saw the previous example i mean the previous solution for v4 was coming out to be negative because this voltage v3 node voltage is equal to one sixth which is less than vtn so which means this device is not even conducting the last device is not even conducting so once you know this is one by six this voltage will be one by six plus 0.5 so 1 by 6 uh, plus 0.5 and this node voltage will be 1 plus 1 by 6 okay so this will be 7 by 6 volts and uh, this guy will be 1 yeah so i'll leave it up to you so you can just solve it and write the answers yeah so that's it i've exhaustively solved most of the questions in case if you have something you can post your questions on the comments i'll definitely answer it uh, i'm a bit occupied these days but i'll definitely answer whenever i get time thank you